you so much for your, your, your sharing. I have a couple of questions. So, Dr. Babu, I'll pose them to you first, and then the, your, your colleagues can then chime in. Uh, one of the first questions that's on the table, uh, one second, my apology for a minute, uh, is that um, the question, yeah. since you're talking about Murid in the, in the idea of space and place, whose response, this is one of the questions being asked, whose response it is to come up with a plan for the Murid in the diaspora? Dr. Babu, can you hear me? Dr. Babu, can you, can you hear? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, did you hear the question? Yes, I did. Okay, so you can yeah. respond. And then, and then you have, every, everyone have about a minute or so to respond to the question. So you have four, four of you. So I'm gonna try to be, make sure it's very brief. So you have a minute, you can go ahead, begin when you're ready. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for all of you who uh, contributed to uh, expanding, deepening uh, my very brief uh, introductory uh, words. Uh, Abdurrahman, to get to your question, I think this is the question that you know the response for already. Okay. And I think some of my colleagues who intervened already uh, alluded to the mission of Sheikh Murtada. Mm -hmm. He is the one who really set the agenda for, for, for all of this. Uh, if we are here today talking about the Murid diaspora uh, and what is happening in terms of cultural reproduction in the diaspora, it's exactly because of his leadership, because his impulsion not only in terms of mm -hmm. his ideas, but also in terms of his material contribution. Uh, people sometimes forgot that the niggle came, mm -hmm. but this was not an empty niggle. That was not only words. He actually mm -hmm. took his own money. I remember uh, when I uh, mm -hmm. traveled to Brescia, the disciple told me, this is how much money Sheikh Murtada gave us to start our project. The same mm -hmm. thing happened in uh, Gabon, uh, Libreville, the same thing happened in Paris, the same thing happened in New York City. He provides the seed money to build this institution. I think he uh, gave us the roadmap uh, for uh, uh, making sure that Murid culture is safe in the diaspora, that Murid identity is safe, but also a culture and a roadmap to actually expand and spread the teaching of Sheikh Amar Bamba. If there is failure, then the failure is certainly the failure of the disciples themselves, but certainly not of uh, Sheikh Murtada. Now, uh, I would like to summarize very quickly uh, the, the question raised by uh, the comment uh, from Sohib uh, Kebe, from Sir uh, Sheikh uh, Fadma and Galai Jai. And in fact, they speak to each other. It's wonderful that they really talk, both of them express the same need. And what is that need about? That need about is uh, how do we make sure that the Murid diaspora really turn into an asset okay mm -hmm. an asset for developing expanding and sharing shahamadu bamba's teachings and practices in the diaspora and how do you do that we cannot do it without speaking the people that we live with without speaking their language we can't do it without putting education at the forefront of whatever it is that we do because what mattered the most for shahamadu bamba is clearly education. That was, uh, in, in my view, the, the most salient, the most important aspect of his mission. Now, if we don't have that, certainly we cannot uh, expect to uh, continue his legacy uh, here in the in the diaspora. This is particularly pressing because all of you, particularly Galai and Shaibu, talk about the second generation of Murid. We are having children in Spain, in Italy, in Gabon, you know, wherever we are, we are having children. Now, mm -hmm. we've been educated in Senegal, around Tuba, the Murid Hadland, and in Senegal. We came here already formed in terms of our cultural awareness and identity. Our children are born in Western cities. Western cities, and I emphasize in Western cities, they are not born in rural areas in the West. They are born mm -hmm. in these big Western cities and where European and Western culture is extremely difficult to fight. You see them in the street. I have a child who is 15 years old. I'm always fighting the street. I'm always fighting TV. I'm always fighting the school because these are my competitors. Whatever it is that I'm trying to do in my house, I have to contend with what my child is learning in the street with his friends, 
at school and in the diaspora. Now, how do we confront that challenge? How do you confront it and have a chance of overcoming all the difficulties that it presents for us? I think Sheikh Fadma, Sidney Sheikh Fadma, uh, talk about uh, the idea of a project for the diaspora. I think uh, uh, Galai talk about it, a project for the diaspora, uh, the attention of the caliphate, because that's where really the leadership must come from. How do you create that awareness at the level of the caliphate? How, could, how do we convince the caliphate? How do we raise the awareness about the challenges we're confronting here in the diaspora and to have the leadership we need in order to move forward? I think that's uh, something that is uh, important and I'm glad that we have Srin Shah Fatma with us. He can certainly be our voice in conveying these ideas uh, to the Sheikh and particularly uh, to Sheikh Muntaka. Srin uh, Shah Fatma talk about missionaries. Uh, the necessity of having people that are trained, that are compensated, uh, in order to make sure that we have in the diaspora people that have the background, that have the education, and they have the dedication of sharing Ahmed Obama's teaching and practices with our children. Uh, this is this is very important. Now, you know, as a student of the diaspora, let, let me bring a little bit of a positive note here. We, we have a lot of kind of uh, anxiety. Let me bring a positive mm -hmm. note here. We need to remember that those murid who left Senegal in the 1970s, many of them actually were traders. Many of them mm -hmm. left the rural areas of Bawal and Kajor, where I am from, and they did not come in the United States or Europe or Italy for a PhD as me or for a master's degree as me, they were looking for a living. They went there after the drought made it impossible for them to make a living from the land of Kajor, Bawal, and Salu. So their main preoccupation was to survive economically first. Mm -hmm. Now, it is important that although they came there to survive... You have, you have one minute. Yeah, Sorry, I'm going minute. quickly. They were able to maintain their Murid identity. I am always fascinated when I visit the Murid diaspora, and I do that a lot, how they were being able to maintain their Murid culture, their belief system, their food, their dress, their way of talking. How did they maintain that in the face of the onslaught of Western culture? How did they do that? I think we should recognize that uh, 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 accomplishment from this diaspora. Now we have uh, another stage in the development of the diaspora now. We are moving from the pioneers to a new generation of Murid. That new generation is our sons, our daughters, and us. Earlier today, we talked about Ndaul Sering Tuba. These are citizens of the West. Now, how can we help these young citizens of the West not only keep the button, pass the button, but actually make it even more attractive, make it even more better, make it even richer? I think that's our challenge. Thank you. Yes, okay. okay. Uh, thank you so much. And there's a there's a another piece to that, but I I want you, your colleagues to go ahead and respond. They have about a minute each to go ahead. So, um, sir, in uh, Shwai Bukeb, if you want to respond, go ahead, please unmute yourself. Uh, uh, excuse me, but I I don't understand the the, the question. Okay. The, que the 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 question is 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 that Dr. Babu alluded to. The question is whose responsibility. Uh, is it the come of our plan to deal with the murid in the diaspora? Whose plan is that? And the, a follow-up part of that to help you understand the question, is it those of the diaspora or is it the central leadership to have a blueprint? So that's the, the context on which but the question I think, I think, I think the, 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 the leadership here in Senegal, because we have a, a murid tradition, a murid uh, teaching, in murid teaching, they say, is it murid uh, 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 the say said, don't do anything without having the, 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 the permission. Because the permission, having permission, it makes you successful. So, 
we as in the in diaspora in uh, outside Senegal, we don't have uh, we have we can have our in, uh, some initi uh, initiative, but we have to receive the 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 the, the, the accordance of, of of the Khalif and of our leaders in in Senegal. So it is the duty of the leader to show them the way, and. As uh, Dr. Babu said, Sheikh Murtada was a, a, a good example. He not only uh, gave direction, and, uh, 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 but he, give, he, he gave uh, his money. And also Sheikh Saleh, he uh, uh, bought a big house, a big center in, 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 in Paris, in ta Taverne. And uh, uh, he, gave, he, he gave us uh, as a gift to the Muslim community there in, in, in France. So I think it is the, 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 the responsibility of the, of, of the leader here in Senegal to, because the, the leader is the, the, the head, the head and the, 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 the eyes and the mind of the community. The, as a body, if the, the head don't show the way, you can't follow, the, the, you, you can't go uh, 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 to it. So I think, Serin Salihu and Siyah Murtada show us a good example and we have to follow the uh, institution. And I know that Sheikh Muntaka, the actual Khalifa, is very aware about this uh, problem. And uh, with the program of the University of Tuba, which he, he is now under uh, con uh, construction, uh, they are a, a, a place for the diaspora and how to spread the, the, the teaching of Sheikh Ahmed Bamba to the foreigner. They are a, a quota, they say, uh, they seconds. are a special quota for the... 30 seconds. You have 30 seconds. Okay. Wrap it up quickly. Quick. Okay. I think that uh, we see Muntaka, inshallah, and his uh, open mind, uh, mindedness, we can do a lot of things, inshallah. Okay, good. Uh, thank you so much. Um, if that, if uh, Sheikh Fatima Baki want to weigh in, if he's not there, we can have uh, uh, Sheikh Ustaz uh, uh, Gay in there. If you could respond to the question. If you understand the question, you have a minute to respond to the question. Because there's an important follow-up question I want to ask Dr. Baba to respond on. So go ahead and, and Bismillah and respond, please. Uh, yeah, yes. Uh, I, I just would uh, like to thank uh, Dr. Babu. He explained... Uh, a lot of things, because we should recognize uh, the leadership of Sheikh Murtaza, and we should also recognize that uh, uh, the diaspora already have done a lot of things, a lot of accomplishments. Uh, but uh, we we should uh, we should say that uh, we have a lot of uh, work to do, so that uh, to solve all issues that we raise uh, today, like education of uh, children, uh, more children who born in the diaspora. We also, uh, uh, but uh, we, we, we can't do it uh, with the leadership of the, the Khalif, uh, Sheikh Mohammed Muntaka. We can uh, bring his attention uh, uh, for all those issues. But uh, the diaspora also have his voice to, to, to say because they leave uh, those issues. And uh, I think uh, together with uh, uh, the leadership in Cuba and uh, leaders in the diaspora, if uh, we talk together, we can identify, we can identify uh, all uh, solutions for all those issues. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, if uh, if uh, 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 is uh, uh, Ndai, uh, are you there? Can you do you want to respond or are you already responded? Oui. Si vous savez me traduire un peu la question, s'il vous plaît. No, the qu the question is that the, 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 it's a two part question the, that that Dr. Babu explained. Who's responsible if you show? lay the foundation of the plan to deal with the issue of the diaspora. And the, and the follow-up part of that is that it, 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 it is the diaspora that is the central leadership to build a blueprint. And then Sen Schweiber said that it is the central leadership. So what is your take on the question? 
دكتور بابو أنا... وكيلكان دوت سي سام متخدوي على منطقه هو المسؤوليه على منطقه هو المسؤوليه اوكي اوكي راهي 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 le rôle mm-hmm. de la diaspora, un euh, nouveau paradigme doit développer. La question que euh, Mohamed Abdurrahman pose, c'est qui doit prendre le leadership Qui doit être responsable euh, pour, ces trans- pour ces transformations-là euh, Quel rôle euh, le diaspora doit jouer et qu'est-ce, qu'est-ce, qui doit être le leadership Qui doit montrer le chemin Voilà, pour, pour moi, quelque part, euh, on peut dire que sont partagés, mais je pense que le mouridisme tel qu'il est, conçu, c'est-à-dire que le legal qui vient donc du calife général des Mourides a un poids très important que si c'est une simple initiative qui vient de la diaspora. Je pense que le projet doit être travaillé par donc les gens de la diaspora, mais qui doit être appuyé par euh, donc l'institution califale qui se trouve au Sénégal parce que c'est euh, voilà c'est le, le creuset identitaire et c'est aussi aussi euh, Euh, comment dire euh, le lieu où tous les mourides donc, donc sont tous inanimes là-dessus pour dire que voilà si le calife donne le nigel donc pour mener un tel projet ça va passer très vite et ça va être accepté par tout le monde et comme vous le savez que le mouridisme même si on est dans la diaspora on est un peu euh, divisé mais c'est pas dans le sens négatif mais dans le sens où on, on entreprend seulement des projets menés par tel ou on doit boycotter les projets de tel ou de tel donc euh, je pense que donc les, les responsabilités sont partagées donc la diaspora doit proposer quelque chose parce qu'il y a une élite dans la diaspora doit proposer quelque chose et aussi l'institution califale doit aussi appuyer appuyer en fait euh, ce, ce, cette cette proposition là Donc je pense que c'est des deux côtés euh, qu'il faut jouer. Mais euh, la, la grande responsabilité aujourd'hui repose sur les élites de la, de la diaspora de d'essayer de, de faire quelque chose donc et le, le, le proposer donc à l'institution califale. Voilà. Ok, thank, thank you. Uh, uh, Dr. Babo, there's a couple other questions, but since uh, Sheikh Tribal raised the issue of the centrality of Touba, I got to raise a very important question. Uh, in, in, in terms of the, the Quran as a textual source, we know the Quran is very clear. When it says, Bismillah ar rahim wa ati Allah wa ati rasul ulul amin minkum. And you know, you mentioned the Diggle. And we have the precedence mm-hmm. of a documented uh, instruction from Sheikh Mutala that was embraced by Sen Salu when Sheikh Mutala made his transition. So the question become, mm-hmm. is that Diggle understood in, in Tuba the, the, to the spirit of the Diggle and is there document any place else in the diaspora like that, that, that document? Because I think that the central question has to be about what he did because that is the, the deliberate nature of what he did. That is what guided us in terms of laying the foundation for space and place in the United Nations as insistent. And that's why the, the Diggle is an important because it's a, it's a precedent. So how do you unpack that for your colleagues who are not aware of that? This is for you, Dr. Bob. Uh, thank you, Mohammed. Uh, let, let me first uh, uh, translate briefly uh, my colleague uh, Galai Ndiaye's comment. Okay. Uh, uh, to respond to the question, Galai, I think that what we need is a synergy. It's a synergy of both the diaspora and the leadership in Tuba. And that's really how he sees things happen. Because this is the tradition of the Muridiyah, I think Sheikh Suhaib clearly uh, explained the, 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 signif- the importance of Nigel. Whatever the will of the diaspora is, we need to have that sanction uh, that, that comes from Tuba. I think that's what Galai said. But he says also that the elite living in the diaspora, the Murid elite in the diaspora, has a very important role to play in this synergy. Uh, it's not only sitting on your hands waiting for Tuba to move. You have to move, <laughs> you too so that this synergy can develop actually to uh, make change possible in the diaspora. So, Mohammed, to come to your point, uh, yeah, but I think if we look at the ways in which things unfolded and continue to unfold since the 1980s, where when Shia Murtala first uh, had his, his journey to New York City, then to Paris and others, um, I think in the tradition of the Muridiyah, 
still that niggle is continuing. People may not be aware of it, or they may not understand the, 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 the underlining significance of it, but it's still there. Uh, look, the, the, when Sheikh Muqtada passed away, Sheikh Salih clearly uh, considered the family of Sheikh Murtala and the head of this family, Sari Mamar, as the one who is his intermediary, his voice, his eyes and his ears about everything diaspora. And I think it's continuing today. So that mission that uh, actually Sheikh Abdullah had gave to Sari Murtada, every other disciple, every other caliph after Sari Abdullah had continue to give that mission uh, to uh, the family of Sheikh Murtada. So in that sense, I think we have the genealogy uh, continuing. Perhaps what is missing is the kind of uh, uh, understanding and awareness among the Murid disciple of the continuity of this tradition and what needs to be done, that how do we need to learn uh, from the foundation of what happened before to continue uh, to make the, pro the project actually uh, continue to grow. Uh, and the idea of synergy that actually the Galai talk about was already there. I, one of the things that I said in the beginning was Thering Murtada brought his nigal in terms of the traditional murid way of doing things, of, of, of uh, allo uh, 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 allocating power and authority. But himself, he contributed significantly to get things done. Mm -hmm. And while he was doing it, one thing that struck me with Sheikh Murtada was that he understood also that he needed to give space to the diaspora. I remember uh, talking to Murid disciple uh, in the diaspora and what all what they told me is the day when they met to create their institution in the diaspora, Sheikh Murtada never uh, 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 wanted to impose somebody to be the leader. He always gave people the power to choose their own leader and then he will pray with them and then he'll give them instruction as to move forward. I think Sheikh Murtada clearly understood this necessary kind of dialogical relationship, this synergy that uh, Galai was talking about between the leadership and the disciple. Yeah, yeah, okay, but I'm going to push you on it because you're the main speaker. You understand it better than most group and I want your colleagues to respond. I'm talking about also the written document, making Veloci as an exemplary as an example of the digger, not just based upon what he did. He put together a document, a document that exists so that there's precedence. For example, you have early this morning you had a younger group talking about what they're doing. And there's a kind of a historical murid context that they're not aware of the digger. We know Sheikh Mutala went to different places, but he was very deliberate in terms of the documented in Wallafal, the digger that he gave specifically appointing below the responsibility for leadership and that become a model for us to look at. Is that the kind of conversation that we are having in other areas in the diaspora around the central document? I'm not sure if another document like this exists in the diaspora, but I know that the one that he wrote that was here in, 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 as a documented evidence of his commitment is what I'm, I'm trying to drive at. Because I think that what framed the conversation between the central place in Tuba and us here in the diaspora, especially the fact that United Nations has now become the the bedrock for, to look at a post-COVID-19 culture. The idea that the United Nations is talking about having psychologists deal with the whole, I, the whole notion of the raise of, of white nationalism globally. Sheikh Mutala was very deliberate. He wanted the United Nations to be that place that, that embodied the tradition of not only his father, but the Sunnah of the Prophet. So is that document understood in that sense in Tuba? That's the question. Yeah. I think you're right. I think what I meant when I said um, the kind of uh, uh, pedagogy of life in the diaspora was something that Sheikh Murtada framed very clearly. Um, I was thinking in terms of uh, setting the framework, uh, giving uh, people the way to do things, the instruction and the philosophy and letting them go with his help. That document you're talking about, I'm certainly aware of it. Perhaps the young generation don't know. I remember it was published in the magazine mm -hmm. uh, in the right. past. And, and, and one thing that really struck me, and I talked with uh, Tubaloji uh, about this, I interviewed him about, about this, and I talked to African-American communities about this, and I talked to Serene Hasimbaki about this. Clearly, what Serene Murtada wanted to do is what Sheikh Serene Sheikh Farma was talking about earlier, having yeah, yeah. a disciple having murid disciple who are from the culture, who know the language, who know the way people think, 
uh, and who do the ministry. That's what he wanted. He clearly wanted uh, Balodi to be uh, the leader in, New York, in, in the United States because he understood what Balodi represented for the African-American community. He understood that he was a leader. He had the legitimacy. He had the credibility. He had the credence. And he had the language. He had the culture. And he knew how to talk to America. And Sheikh Mutala's goal was not actually a goal of cultural retention. And I'm going to repeat this. Sheikh Murtala's goal was not a goal of cultural retention. Sheikh mm. Murtala knew that murids in the diaspora were already murid, and nobody is going to change them. You don't need to preach a murid in New York City or Italy or somewhere. You cannot change them. What he wanted was the teaching of Sheikh Ahmed Obama to be spread, to make Islam uh, attractive to people through Sheikh Ahmed Obama. He wanted Murid to present Sheikh Ahmed Obama as an attractive model for non-Muslims to come to Islam, just as Prophet Muhammad has done, uh, as uh, 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 have been in the history of Islam. That's exactly what he wanted. That's why he uh, was quite uh, 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 deliberate in putting Balodi in the leadership, but also surrounding himself with African-American Murid. Uh, early on in one of our talk, I think, uh, uh, Jonathan uh, Bonman, who discussed the Nawi Sering Tuba, uh, he observes that, you know, some years ago, uh, there were many more African-American coming to Murid Evans than there is now. There is almost none now. I was here. Mm -hmm. My first Amadou Bamba Day, I think, was in the 1990s. So I was here. <laughs> I saw the large community of African-American that participated actively. You don't see them anymore. We need to ask mm -hmm. ourselves the question, why is it that they don't see, you don't see them anymore? What is it? Have people been able to follow up on Sheikh, Amadou, Sheikh, Sheikh Murtada's teaching and his, his instruction? I think these are questions that we need to ask ourselves. And I'm glad that many of the uh, uh, commentators who actually talk raise this question of the necessity of rethinking really the mission mm -hmm. of uh, uh, diasporic murid and uh, um, you know, uh, looking in uh, in ways of doing things differently. Galai isn't talk about reinventing the dahira, that the concept of dahira perhaps need to be reinvented in the diaspora. I know that it's going, it's it's, it's it has been done a little bit. We remember Matlabul Fawzaini that built the hospital in Tuba. We remember the dahira now in Tuba. Exactly, we have a dahira in charge of the security in Tuba. We have a dahira in charge of sanitation. These are not the traditional mission of dairas, actually. This is an evolution of dairas that are becoming some kind of NGOs and so forth. Perhaps we need also to rethink the role of the cursoring tuba. I think she will talk about it. How do we make cursoring tuba an institution with substance, not only a skeleton, mm -hmm. a container? <laughs> How do we make it a, a, a place where you go to learn about cursoring tuba, to resource to yourself? How do you make it that? These are the tasks that are for uh, all Murids actually to think about. And certainly this is a project for people to, to work on. Mm -hmm. I don't know how they can organize themselves to do it, but I think it's time to do it. This is time to do it. And if it's not done, uh, it may, may be too late. I know that my son mm -hmm. is 15. I know that other sons are 18 and 19 and daughters are 20s. If you don't do much, uh, maybe when we are gone, who knows? what these kids are going to be, you know. Okay. I think Thank it's only time to do it, yeah. Okay. Uh, just um, uh, in, a, in a quick 30 second bit, uh, or uh, not more than a minute, uh, Sin, uh, Sin Shribu, I want you to respond to what Dr. Babu is saying, based upon your idea of the centrality of Tuba's role. And do you understand that is a document that exists that Sikmutala wrote as, a, as an example? I want you to respond to that. Sin Shribu, Sin, yeah, Sin, so. Sin Shribu, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I saw a document uh, written by Sinsia Fadma, Sinsia Gentar, about the diaspora, how to organize them. But, uh, and I, I heard something about the, some document of Sia Mutla, but I, I never read it. I never, uh, read it. So, okay. I think if the, 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 the diaspora uh, organized themselves and ha like Sin Mamor and Sin Mutla, try to, 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 to organize them. Inshallah, all these documents can, 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 can be like uh, as a capital. We have to capitalize all these documents to build, uh, uh, taking all these documents 
uh, and uh, try to build over this uh, uh, foundation. Okay. okay. And okay. I think I think I saw uh, one day I saw a, a, a book of Muhammad Galayjai about the murid in, in diaspora, and I think this book not yet published. And uh, I think Galay have to do something because he's living there and he's a, a good intellectual. He's speaking French and uh, well educated and well trained in, in Azhar. He can uh, present a good uh, document, inshallah, about how to, to, to organize the, 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 the diaspora and how to organize Murid community uh, uh, abroad. To, to 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 be better uh, and to be uh, more efficient inshallah okay good okay inshallah Shuk uh, uh, i think we have uh, we have someone on the line and uh, we have a couple more questions are you hearing me we have about another yeah, go yeah, ahead yeah. I, can hear you. I can hear you go ahead okay i just noticed that uh, you know i i lived in the I'm, i live in senegal now but i lived in diaspora for 12 years 7 years mm -hmm. in france 5 years in the us and uh, I remember when I attended uh, the second Bamba Day in 1990, discussing with Sarin Sambay, he was noticing that uh, when we were going to the United Nations, actually, if it was before the conference, that the people that brought in the United Nations conference, as somebody mentioned, were not intellectual. There were street sellers, uh, taxi drivers, and those kind of people. And I think those people are still needing what they need to do in the community. Uh, where we now, uh, we didn't have intellectuals taking it from there to, 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 to the next level. You know, in the United Nations, those who made it happen were taxi drivers and street sellers, but they don't make a speech there. The second uh, uh, issue raised by uh, Shahant Babu also was the second generation. You know, if I have uh, Sidin Jai's son who, I mean, he's preparing to do the best schools and he wants him to be president of, president of the United States, and this is a question to Shahan Tababu. Uh, where do we have to draw the line between uh, uh, the, the, the wall of culture and the, the, the murid culture? Can he be a perfect murid and be a, a, an American? Uh, and this is good also for converts. And uh, the last thing also is I agree perfectly with uh, Professor Kalanjai that I think the, the non-intellectuals did their part of the work, but the intellectuals in the community are not performing the way they should. And also, uh, I think the Murid, to answer the, the question, uh, decision-making, uh, seeking the Negal is not centralized like a communist party. I mean, if you look at the history of Shah Ahmad Bamba, when he founded Dar es Salaam, he gave it to Imam Shahanta with all the disciples. So it's a top-down approach, but where? With leaders. I mean, he's telling leaders to tell to their people. So I think also what uh, Gale said here is very important about the, regarding the document and regard, regarding uh, uh, everything we dealing with the diaspora. There should be think tanks and dynamic intellectual people bringing issues to Sheikh Mundaha and asking for Nikal. Thank you very much. Okay, okay, thank you for that. But I, I want, I'm going to push back on that, my brother. I, I think that the reason why I'm raising the question about the Diggle, I don't know when you were here but there was a large cadre of African-American intellectuals oh. that were well-versed not only in academia, but in the sciences and Islamic studies that wished to be at the Dara East 37th Street that was able to formulate the idea why we have the proclamation for the United Nations. So it wasn't done in, 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 in isolation. You had the Senegalese who were, a lot of them were merchants, but you had also a segment of the Senegalese who were intellectuals too and also African-American, a large cadre of intellectuals. I'm not sure if you're aware of that, because that's, this is one of the things that, when you talk about the Diggly have to unpack that, for example, the, the, the birth of the magazine was what, what came about because of that, that, that dynamic, what I call intersectionality and interdisciplinarity between the African-American intellectuals and the Senegalese intellectuals who were here, Dan Babo Shek Shek Se, and many other people. That's how the magazine was born. But the problem becomes is that the fact that how did we institute the instruction of the Marabu around that diggle in terms of real participation? And you have to understand below you surrounded themselves with some very bright people. And so, uh, for example, if you were to look at 
the, 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 the clergy breakfast or the brunches that St. Mamo took part at the Harlem Hospital, that came out of the intellectual tradition of the African diasporic Muslims who were doctors, psychologists, social scientists, and other people was in that conversation in the public space. So what seems to happen is that there's a kind of ahistorical narrative that's not really deciphered and unpacked uh, uh, properly to understand the dynamics, that, inter that, that intersection intellect between the African-American intellectuals and the Senegalese, although there was a small number. For example, Mustafa Gaida Fatima he used to have conversation on Sunday with the same intellectual group. So part of the problem is that that is not unpacked properly. So sometimes you have some gap in understanding the narrative footprint. That's, that's so so you, you're correct, but I think your assumptions are also erroneous too, because it, 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 it is not based solid in some of the factors that you're unaware of. And, so I'm, and I'm hoping that in these spaces, we can have the conversation, inshallah. Good point. Okay. Hey, Babu, you want to comment? We have about three minutes, I was told. Yes. Uh, I think uh, uh, Selim Lamin uh, asked an important question here. Uh, and the question seems to be, uh, where do you draw the line uh, between being a murid and then being an American citizen? And the possibility of having uh, a, 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 a great grandson or a grandson of a murid disciple here one day running like an Obama <laughs> and becoming a murid. Now, now, what do you do in that context? Mm -hmm. I think I don't see a conflict between the two. I think one can be an entirely murid and an entirely American citizen. I, I don't look at identity in terms of binaries. I look at identity in terms of synergy, uh, in, in, in terms of hybridization. One can be a good murid and a good American citizen and a good American president. Uh, those I don't see uh, any conflict uh, between these values. Just as today, we can have a good Irish American president, a good Italian American president, and a good German American president. I really de don't see the conflict here. Uh, I, I think our challenge is, in fact, how do we resist uh, the uh, tsunami of American cultural imperialism? That's really where the work needs to be. Uh, sure. and I'm talking about American cultural imperialism, but I can also talk, can also talk about French cultural imperialism. Because one of the fears that our, our, our friends and, and, and fellows in, in, in France particularly has, of course, you know France as a very militant secular republic right. that really doesn't like religion at all. That's not the case in the United States. The secularism in the United States is very different from a, from cultural term. I, I think that that kind of fear doesn't exist here in the United States. But clearly, uh, the challenge, the ball is really on our court. Uh, yes. We, the parents, we, uh, the pioneers, uh, how, how, do we make, uh, 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 how do we make sure that uh, we can uh, create a context, a conversation actually, between Murid, Senegalese, Islamic, whatever identity you have, and American identity. And I think one does not have to be to look at this from a binary perspective. You can be an entirely American and entirely murid, and I do not see conflict between uh, between these two. Okay, thanks, thanks, thanks so much. And I, 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 we're almost out of time, one minute. And I and I hope that uh, uh, thank. I want to thank the, the you, you for your contribution, uh, also for Czech Lamy, uh, uh, the other uh, contributors as well for their point of view. And I'm hoping that we have an opportunity uh, to further this conversation. Send uh, certain. Tribal Kebe, thanks for your for your contribution. Sheikh Lam, uh, Sheikh Fatima and Baki, Saint Mamadou uh, Gay and Dai, as well as Saint Lamin for your for your comments. Um, uh, Babu. Uh,